Hello everyone! Welcome back to Dysfunctional Systems Episode 1, Learning to Manage Chaos. God, this music's freaking awesome, isn't it? Just listen to it. Oh, and by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but when you buy the game, you get the full soundtrack along with it, which is about 40 minutes. Yeah, so for five bucks, you get the whole game and the entire 40 minute plus soundtrack. Freaking awesome. Okay, let's resume where I left off from. Damn, loading, <laughs> loading save games in a visual novel is extremely fast, uh, basically instant. Okay, so the last thing I needed to do is read the codex, which I did not get to. So let's do that right now. All right, Brighton. That is where I'm at right now, correct? I believe so. Brighton is a minor society on... whatever that is. S S86, blah, blah, blah. With strong historical and present connections to both Gabria and Vidria. A site of several rich mineral deposits. It was previously a Gabrian colony, but gained independence 120 Sul years ago. It also shares a large portion of its border with Fedria. And a truce has been signed between Gabria and Fedria concerning the territory. Brighton was still a colony at the time. Although Brighton shares in the technological advancement of its mother country, it does not share in prosperity, and is economically weak by comparison. The Brighton people are hardworking, are a hardworking and closely knit group, and tend to describe themselves metaphorically as ants. This society has not yet been visited. Categorized as a minor society. Alright. So it was a Gabrian colony, that's right, and then gained independence. At least in name, they gained independence. In reality, they obviously don't feel exactly very free, do they? 120 Sul years ago, or Suli, however you pronounce that. Alright. Vedria. Which is another place that... It has a connection to... I forgot, is Fedria right next to it? Does Fedria border it, or what? Fe Whoa, damn. Fedria is a major society on... Whatever that is. It is one of the uh, one of the three most significant societies on said world. Marked by its rich culture and extreme aggressiveness. It is responsible for many of Sewell's major works of art, literature, and music while at the same time its army and navy are unrivaled by any other. It is a direct democracy, emphasizing fairness and the power of the individual. Fedria's wars have been numerous and frequent, but within the last two centuries, developments in aeronautics have made uh, made by other major societies, Gabria and Rosar, as well as a fair number of truces, have largely put an end to this behavior. Unfortunately, they display an unusual degree of boldness. This has, in the past, caused them to ignore treaties and threats of technological superiority in order to go to war. Interestingly, despite their history of aggression, Fedria has never tried to expand past the borders of its continent, nor has it created any colonies in foreign lands. Regardless of colonialism, many of the mediations on Sewell have concerned Fedria's actions. Okay, so they're a democracy... They have, they're majorly powerful in terms of war, in terms of fighting. They start a lot of fights and ignore a lot of treaties. <laughs> Yet for some reason, they've never tried to go past their own continent. And yeah, they're obviously very fiery and cause a lot of conflicts because many of the mediations on Sewell have concerned Fedria's actions. All right. Fedria has always been extraordinarily territorial and protective of its people. This is due to, lo due to the location on which they settled, on one of the few fertile lands of Sewell. The land was and is quite desirable, naturally, and Fedria was frequently accosted by other tribes and nations attempting to claim this territory. Necessity led them to be a very strong people, and the familiar helpfulness of its society bore a friendly and nationalistic culture. There grew a rich appreciation for their history which led to some of their later aggressive mannerisms. Fedrians never forget the slights made against their people, and after violently expanding its borders to scare off enemies, it spent much of its time warring the nations that had assaulted them in the past. 
To date, Fedra is believed to have initiated 251 wars. Holy shit! The holy shit was not in the note, by the way. That's me. Holy shit! 251 fucking wars? Oh my god! Dear god! That's... I, I, that's incomprehensible to me. 251 wars. And participated in 253. Hence, it has been stereotyped as a nation of violent roughhousing. While true to a point, they tend to be incredibly defensive and quick-tempered, reports indicate that the Fedrians are generally quite jovial and creative. They are also the least discriminatory nation on Sewell. An expression of theirs is that they hate everyone equally. <laughs> but the truth is that they're surprisingly open to immigration and cultural diversity. It seems that they only ever take issue with countries themselves rather than the country's people. Mediators, be advised. As welcoming and charismatic as they are, do not fall prey to their influence. Remember that war is severely chaotic. Furthermore, while their military action has calmed down recently, tensions are always high when it comes to Fedria's relations with other nations, uh, other societies. Currently, Fedria has been focusing on artistic endeavors and has adopted a somewhat isolationist doctrine. Its military is constantly honed, but has not been deployed in approximately 50 school years. Okay, so they've calmed down a bit. Fusion Bomb. Which is presumably what Brighton is uh, threatening Gabria with. Note, this entry concerns fusion weapons, which are initiated by fission. For pure fusion weapons, see the entry on True Fusion. Fusion bombs, also known as nukes, are highly destructive weapons fueled primarily by nuclear fusion. I just realized the image changes. Neat. Their power ranges anywhere from obliterating cities to entire countries. All in a few moments. Due to this, their possession is often quite... Uh, efficient in quickly silencing opposition. Stability is often reached. However, when opposing or multiple societies possess the weapons. Mutually assured destruction tends to prevent societies from risking angering one another. Fusion bombs are also notable for their fallout, which often takes several decades to dissipate. To expound, fallout is the result of a nuclear weapon's detonation, fission or fusion, on an area. Since the resulting explosion is incredibly radioactive, its effects will linger long after the initial shock has passed, as the radiation will stick to the surrounding life and environment. Radiation sicknesses, uh, symptoms, fevers, disorientation, fatigue, headache, hair loss, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, internal bleeding, Increased risk of cancer and mutations in survivors' children are all results of a nuclear weapons fallout. Although most systems refer to these weapons as products of fusion, it is not entirely true. While fusion is certainly a part of the process, the reaction must first be started using nuclear fission. An atomic nucleus, often that of uranium, splitting. The reason it is, is usually begun with fission is due to the incredible energy and pressure required for nuclear fusion. For most societies, fission is the only method available for producing the required energies. If a proper level of energy is reached, the nuclear fuel, often hydrogen, will begin to fuse with itself to produce a new element, often helium. This reaction is significantly more destructive than that of fission, to the point that fission bombs are usually quickly declared obsolete once fusion is explored. The fission stage of these weapons is the primary contributor to the radioactive bi radioactive byproducts left by the detonation. And Gabria! Which is where Brighton came from. They were a colony of Gabria. Gabria is a major society on Sewell. It is one of the three most significant societies on said world, marked by extreme wealth and influence. It is the richest society on Sewell and has connections with nearly all other Sewell societies. Gabria is currently a patriarchal monarchy with socialistic leanings, government-funded health, education, welfare, etc. The majority of mediations on Sewell have dealt with this society. Gabrians began as nomadic, trading people, quickly establishing a reputation for their amiability and good dealings. Trust was heavily placed in them for their reliability, and they often end up playing intermediary between several budding nations on their home continent. Eventually, seeing the value in the messages they were, cha they were charged to carry between countries, they began trading information. Their mobility, connections, mercenary escort, and knowledge of secrets protected them from assault, 
and soon the nomads, the nomads became rather notorious. At some point in time, they founded the Gabrian nation along the coast of their continent. From their new settlement, they amassed a military and turned to imperialistic goals. It did not take them long to have much of the world under their influence, with colonies on every continent and a grasp on most countries. Gabria is also largely responsible for the technological advancement of Sewell. Their ingenuity and cleverness mixed with opportunism has pushed scientific discovery along much faster than the average system. They have managed to develop and act upon a nuclear theory, powering their society and old colonies with rudimentary, somewhat experimental, nuclear fusion reactors. Their latest project has been the construction of artificial islands on Sewell's oceans. Currently, Gabriel remains at the top of Sewell's society. While it has granted technical freedom to all of its colonies, it seems that they are still leashed in some way or another to their mother country. Right. While well, it has granted technical freedom to all of its colonies, it seems they're still leashed in some way or another to their mother country. That's why, even though Brighton is technically free, they're not really. Thanks to the sanctions, if I remember right. Sewell. Holy shit, that's long. Let me take a drink of water. Ew. This water tastes weird. Why would my water taste weird? Water's not supposed to taste like much of anything at all. Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> System, blah, blah, blah. Plane, blah, blah, blah. Sewell, active. It's a planet. Nine major societies. Right, and Gabriel is a major society, right? We have major society. Fedria, major society. Brighton, minor society. So included in the nine is Fedria and Gabria, but not Brighton. Development, scientific, low level, rapid advancement. Physics. Rigid. Okay. Well, I'm glad it has rigid physics. Apparently the plane is shared with other planets. It's isolated. It has been visited 45 times. Damn. Personal security note. Many species of fish on Sewell are poisonous to earthen. Avoid seafood to be safe. Good to know. Okay. Sewell is one of four planetary civilizations known to reside on plane blah blah blah. Currently, it is unaware of the of its distant neighbors and is likely to remain so as it has not yet achieved interstellar travel. Sewell's five continents are largely arid and mountainous. However, each contains small patches of fertile land. These lands were once in endangered due to war and conflict, but are now fiercely protected as a result of mediation visits numbers 8 through 15. Sewell contains 12 oceans, all of which are heavily salted and somewhat acidic. Nevertheless, these oceans contain a variety of sea life, and consequently, fishing constitutes a large portion of both the economy and food supply of Sewell. International conflicts with regards to the ownership and rights to fish sea life was resolved in Mediation's visits 16 through 22. The harsh conditions of the planet have led to an increase in the rate of technological advancement, causing Sewell to teeter on the brink of an outlier classification. Scientific discoveries can happen much more quickly here than in most other worlds. Due to this, levels of chaos within the system are variable and may spike unexpectedly. However, overall, this has yet... Uh, this has not been a common occurrence. Although there are nine societies on Sewell of notable influence, there are three that are of particular importance to the system. These three are called Gabria, Fedria, and Rosar. The remaining six, Roma, Karis, Dom, Jonas, the Madlands, and Mesa, are not usually of major consequence, although uh, though are often caught up in the quarrels of the main three. The main three will be covered in brief in the following paragraph. Please visit the respective codex entries for more in-depth information. Gabria is the most economically powerful of the three, largely due to its sizable number of colonies scattered across the globe. It is also the most frequent, uh, frequently problematic, Fedria is a military superpower as well as a paragon of the arts. Or. Paragon or paragon? Can't remember how it's pronounced. Anyway. It is prone to warring and is also commonly involved in the subject of mediation. The last society, Rosaire, is diabolical, having a reputation of cruelty and bizarre acts of violence. It has used fear to rise to power and control its populace. Interestingly, it is the least problematic of the three, and its involvement in issues can dramatically lower the levels, levels of chaos. Despite Sewell's occasional high levels of chaos, it has not often required mediation. 
and is considered quite stable. Still, caution should be taken when visiting this world. Okay, apparently this is relatively stable. It's relatively stable despite the fact that Fedria has initiated 251 wars. Jesus, Fedria. Alright, what else is here? Is there anything other than the Codex? No, just a bunch of options. Okay. Certainly, this is amazing. I smile pleasantly in admiration of technology. Most unfortunately, my smile is very, very temporary. As it turns out, the fusion bomb is incredibly horrible. Yes, it is. It really is. It is a weapon that will detonate and destroy everything in a very large radius with a disturbing rapidity. In its wake is a kind of miasma so powerful that it sticks to a place for several decades before dissipating. It causes sickness to those who did not die and greatly increases the chance of cancer and mutations in the children of survivors. Once again, I am affronted by the sense of unreality that has persisted since my induction into the Mediatorum. This is not even something you would read about in storybooks. This is not a thing one can imagine. Why would you kill somebody else? Why would you kill hundreds, thousands, millions? And what's more, with such effects? What does that accomplish? They said I would not understand it for a long time. That it would be covered later on in my schooling, and that until then, I would not be allowed to mediate wars. I need to understand this now, though. It may go down in a matter of hours. What will happen if I remain in this foolish ignorance of mine? My heart thumps and my stomach twists. I put my hand over my mouth and squeeze my eyes shut. I am not the type to freak out, but I am freaking out a lot today. Winter. Ah. Come on, calm down. We'll make it through this and you'll be better for it, okay? I close my codex and look at Cyrus, who has placed his hands on my shoulders. The gesture does not help. For some reason, it makes me feel worse. My heart tightens, and tears escape from my lids. I feel the same feelings that come when I imagine how it would be if my dad were to die, only the feeling is much more distorted and disgusting. I answer Cyrus with a warbling voice as my emotions are in tatters. I... I'm sorry, sir, but I don't understand. I'm sorry I'm stupid. Winter, come on, hey. You aren't stupid. You're a smart girl. I am. I am. I'm incredibly stupid. You know it. You, you're just a bit hard-headed. It's okay. You're young, Winter, and you're strong, too. You're strong, Winter. I just don't get it. I'm sorry. I raise my head and look at his face. Through my tears, I can see that Cyrus's cheeks are more flushed than my own. He jumps a little, as if he were startled, and hugs my head to his chest. His heart is beating very fast, and I clutch the bottom of his shirt. When he speaks, his voice reverberates through his body in a powerful way. So powerful that I even feel a little bit more confident. We will not fail. I lift my head and look at him again. He shivers and looks from me to the fountain. I'll make sure of it. But only if you shape up. I'm terrified. I know. Okay. Let's finish this up, alright? I push away from him, and wipe my eyes and cheeks. I feel as though this is too much for me to take. It is hard to have faith in Cyrus. The further I go down the path of a mediator, the harder it is to have faith in anything. Still, if I feel this is so wrong, then I ought to stop it, right? I should stop all this from happening. I should stop this war plainly and simply. I steel myself and stare directly into Cyrus's eyes, sure to convey my conviction. Sir. Yes? I'm confident that we will succeed here, too. I'll also make sure that we will not fail. Hmm. 
That mindset is good. That mindset is good, Winter Harrison. Hold on to it. It's easy to lose. Alright. Let's kill the president. My soul decides to flee from my chest. What? <laughs> that, she is echoing my exact thoughts. What? What? That's the obvious course of action. I, is it? It never even occurred to me. That isn't... No, it, no, it's not. That is the least obvious thing. Oh, then what's the most? Talk to him? Convince him that he shouldn't do the thing he wants to do? Winter, we don't have the time for diplomacy. What? Mediation is all about diplomacy. No, it isn't. I shouldn't even have to tell you that. Mediators are simply neutral parties that enter worlds with problems. Assess the situation and solve the issues by whatever means necessary. You really are scum. What? I look him in the eye, nearly snarling. What is it, sir? You think I'm deaf? Every student knows how you handle things. That's right. People talk about you. Everyone knows that you're... That you're a murderous and cold... Ugh. And don't talk to me like I'm that stupid. I remember what they said at orientation. I know that setting existence to balance is totally important. I know how needed it is, but I thought we were more heroic than that, and I... And I... I can't believe I felt confident because of you. Do you even hear yourself? What is necessary? We shouldn't lower ourselves to that barbaric level. I'm really starting to tire of your lip, Harrison. <clears throat> now listen here. Many in Brighton do not support aggression against Gabria, I've heard. That's only natural. War is a terrible thing. Furthermore, while their poverty extends far, it can be argued that the situation is for the best. Barnaby does not see that, though. He sees his own solution as the only solution. The people do not side with him. That is at least one issue that needs to be addressed. They must support him. They must feel that his decision is right. So I will kill him. In doing so, the blame should be placed upon Gabria, and it should be clear to the populace that they have an enemy to fight. What in the... What is he saying? Was all that talk before to prepare me to accept this evil? To prepare me for these calculated deaths? You're not just asking me to support killing a man, are you? You're going to allow the nuclear bomb to be launched as well. Are you insane? I can't sit by and allow that. You've underestimated the plight of these people. For Barnaby, who has no real power, to rest it for himself in such a dramatic fashion suggests that he is not willing to listen to reason. If we had longer than four hours, then it would have perhaps been possible to change his mind. But like this, just forget it. That nuke will be launched. All we can do is unite these people before they go to war. We can still bring this nation into order. Order? Does that bother you? Stability is paramount, Winter. Ugh. So cool your head. Think about this logically, already. Being a mediator isn't a thing of emotion. That's... What? That's only your opinion... And you're only one person. Don't act as though you know anything. I don't know a lot, but what I do know is that murder is the worst thing a person can do. So horrible and disgusting and terrible that we don't even write about it, and it never happens. What? You want to rebel against me again? I don't know. I don't know if I should. Because... You're kind of right. You... You... It doesn't look like it. 
They're so tainted by their troubles that it is doubtful I could convince the president to stop this. Killing him instead, though? Letting the nuke go off, too? Could I even forgive myself for that? Yet, we probably don't have very much time. From what I read and what I've heard, it seems that weapon can be released very uh, easily very, very soon. Winter? Blast. I need more information. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need more information. And I need a drink of water. Hold on. Are you saying that preventing the launch and war is impossible? I'd mentioned before that, with luck, it won't be. With their president gone and the only remaining leader being a backup, there may at least be a delay on the bomb, which would give us more time to attempt other plans. The death of the president could also lead to Gabria taking Brighton much more seriously, since it signals a dangerous level of civil unrest. In which case, Gabria would probably leash this nation completely before they even had the chance to launch the nuke. Alternatively, there's also a small chance, a very small chance, that Gabria will give in to Barnaby's demands. In the likely case that none of these possibilities come to pass, however, you can, st you can still expect the relations between Gabria and Brighton to proceed much differently from now on. Brighton citizens will believe that Gabria has a stranglehold on them so complete that they can kill their president less than an hour after a threat of aggression. Some will be in fear to rebel against such power, but many will be emboldened in the belief that Gabria has gone too far. What's more, once that bomb has gone off, the citizens won't be afraid for much longer. The fusion bomb holds unprecedented power here. Nobody understands it, not even Brighton. It could separate these two muddled nations and produce a new order. As an added bonus, once they see its power and go to fear it, it's probable this world will never see a nuclear weapon launched again. <clears throat> if Barnaby were to launch it now without his nation's consent, the people would condemn him as a tyrant. It could lead to both a civil war and an international one. We need to make him a martyr, a hero in death. He will be a sacrificial symbol of Brighton loyalty, and the people will follow him posthumously. Gracious, he seems so sure of himself. Would this really be for the best? Would this bring about order? Ah. <sighs> what should I do? Okay, now I have a choice. For the first time, I have a choice. Can I save? I'm going to save. Let's make a save right there. <sighs> okay. Let's think about this. What he's saying makes a lot of sense. What he's saying makes a hell of a lot of sense. And also, I don't know very much about the situation at all. Kill the president would unite them. And if I rebel, what the hell is going to happen? Ah. Following Cyrus makes the most sense. It simply does. It just does. Rebelling seems like a more interesting option, because I'm really curious how the hell I could rebel. <sighs> how could I hope to solve this any other way? What could I do? I don't know. And she certainly doesn't know. There's not enough time to really negotiate anything. Like, sh like he said, diplomacy. There's not enough time. I'm really curious what rebelling would do, though. <sighs> you know what? Screw it. I... I'm gonna rebel. I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. Following Cyrus makes more sense. 
but I'm really curious. I don't often do this in a game. Usually I go with what makes the most sense, but I'm, this time I'm going to do what... Go with an option that doesn't make the most sense, but is nonetheless more interesting. I'm going to rebel. There isn't a question about this. I need to stop him, or, or I need to try. If only to keep my sanity in knowing I did my best. Okay, yeah. Agreed. Very much agreed. I need to convince Osiris not to go through with this. I won't follow you. I can't believe this. Are you even listening to anything I'm saying? Are you listening to me? No, you're just a kid. <sighs> well, do. I have a lot of things to say to you. <sighs> Alright, how about this? If you can seriously convince me that this isn't the right, dis uh, right choice, novice, then I'll follow you to the bitter end. There won't be a bitter end. Okay, let's do this. I don't know how the hell I'm going to do this, but I'm going to try. Bring it on. Not if I have anything to do about it. Just shut up and listen. I'd like to point out that this music, though it's good, is bizarrely inappropriate for what's happening. It's groovy, and nothing about this situation is groovy at all. Very weird choice of music. I'm listening. <sighs> okay. Inform him that this is awful. Yeah, that's pointless. Question him regarding the frequency of his murderous behavior. <sighs> Alright, let's caution him about the country's people and their potentially ill reactions. Are you certain that the people of Brighton will be okay with this? Like I said, most of the people don't even agree with Barnaby. Don't agree with what, sir? With the war. We've been over this. Oh, so you went around Brighton with a little survey, huh? Check yes if you think Barnaby's a prat. You certainly are an amazing mediator. I didn't even notice. And not only was I told that many disagreed, it follows sense that they should. After all, their president is a tool, and although they live painfully, they also live peacefully. Why would they all agree with such drastic measures? Listen, what you're proposing is a grand ruse over all of them, simply to paint Gabria more of a villain. What if they don't follow your expectations, if they don't unite? What if you're found out? What chaos then awaits them? It will be fine. No, it won't. These people are far too tense to be just fine after their president is murdered within their own borders. You wouldn't know. Neither would you. Can you see the future? I can't, but I've seen the past. Well, I see the president killing the pres... Uh, well, I... Slip there. But it's kind of an appropriate slip. Well, I see the present killing the president could just as easily tear this country apart as you think it would unite it. I think that was a good start. He is at least certainly entertaining me now. I'll continue then. Okay. Remind him of the speech he did not listen to. Remind him of the mother country, Gabria. Remind him of the militaristic border country, Fedria. Hmm. What exactly would I be say what what exactly would I be saying about Gabria or Fedria? It just says remind him. That's right, he didn't listen to the full speech. Hmm. Fedria borders. Uh, Brighton. And, well, obviously they're militaristic. How would that be relevant, though? How would that be relevant? I'm just not sure exactly what she's going to say with these options. 
Let me save again. I might want to go back at some point if I really mess something up. <sighs> Let's see, Gabriel is the economic giant. Very opulent country. They're holding Brighton's leash. I'm going to remind him of the speech he didn't listen to. Have you considered the president's speech? Honestly? Not really. What? That's something you most definitely have to do before proceeding with negotiations. Listen. Well then, it's a good thing that, not, that I'm not planning to negotiate. We didn't even hear the entire thing. We got the deadline, and that is enough. What about his conditions? Doesn't matter. I've heard it all before, Winter. Nothing will be different this time. You're being so bullheaded. What if something he mentioned revealed the key to convincing him? Don't worry about it. In my experience, such speeches aren't so telling. Experience is not everything. It's better than nothing. <sighs> no matter how good my start is, if I stumble one foot in, then... <sighs> No, cool it, cool it. This isn't over yet. Well, insulting him would be pointless. Question the confidence he has in himself. Well, he has, to be fair, he has a lot of confidence because he has a lot of experience. So I don't think I'm going to shake his confidence. Um, it's either that or show my determination. What would showing him my determination do? No, I'm going to question the confidence he has in himself. It's probably not going to shake him. But I'm going to do it. Just how can you be so confident? Are you even listening to me? How many times do I have to repeat myself? It's just, if you're so professional, shouldn't you be considering all the ways you could go about this? It isn't that I don't consider them, I do. And when I do, I determine how unlikely they are to succeed. Is that all mediation is to you? Operating based off of probability? It helps. Aren't all of our issues Involving some manner of chaos, though? Even today, a new development completely blindsided us. Well, Winter, if I caution myself because of every single possibility, then nothing will ever get done. Things can be done, though. Not the way you'd like them to. Risks have to be taken, and sacrifices have to be made. If you want to dismiss plans, you can't just do it because you find them reprehensible. You're just a cynic. How should I proceed from here? I suppose the best thing would be to back off from more personal matters. Agreed. God, these are really tough choices. Deconstruct his plan. His plan's pretty damn solid, I have to admit. It is. We need something else. There's gotta be other options. Ask if he's thinking of the worst-case scenario. Now, consider other options. What other options may there be? It certainly doesn't speak well for your case when you have to ask questions like that. Oh, just, just, fuck, shut up. <laughs> he's right. He's, he's, he's totally right. But seriously, shut the fuck up. No, no, I did, did, I, it didn't happen. Nope. That's not what I... I just wanted to know if you were capable of having any other plans. I see. Well, try to con trying to convince Gabria within Barnaby's time limit would be futile. It would take too long. Even with teleportation magic and everything? It's planar shifting, Winter. You do well to remember that. At any rate, one way or another, we're going to have to find the President. What we do to him? Well, isn't that what you're trying to change my mind on? 
Do you think we could rally the people against Barnaby's choice? While many are against him, it's clear by Barnaby's actions that their voices are unheard. Although we could try to focus their efforts, it's likely it would accomplish nothing. You are sure about that? Not completely, to be honest. But even if he would listen, we'd have a lot of trouble getting enough people together in such a short amount of time. Is that all? Well, we could also start a straight riot, distracting the higher echelons by creating descent below. This would very likely prevent the launch, but it would be awfully chaotic. Sounds dangerous. Quite. Lastly, we could draw our trump card. Saying where we're from and officially taking hold of the situation? We don't want to do that. No, we do not. But it is always an option. There are certainly other things that could be done, but these are a few more choices that one might consider. I see. Alright, what to ask next? I have to remember that my questions themselves can speak for or against my position. Yes, that's true. Keeping that in mind... Hold it. Hmm. I can tell you're thinking of another question to ask me. Well, I'll have no more of that. It's about time I get to ask my own questions. Question, don't you think? Is that your question? My answer is no. Now then. Don't get smart, girl. If you're going to argue position, then you'd best be prepared to defend it. That wasn't part of the deal. The deal for you to convince me? What does that have to do with who asks the questions? <sighs> what? Worried you won't have a good answer? No, it's not that. Well, here it is. Why are you doing this? Huh? Well? Hmm. Well, I'm not going to go with no answer. For a moral cause or for a just cause? What just cause would that be? Alright. Well, I'm just going to go with my original... Basically, my original reading uh, reason for rejecting in the first place. For a moral cause. I just don't like the idea of murdering someone. Everything about this... Oops. Everything about this screams of evil. Evil, huh? <laughs> is that all? What do you mean? Your reason to argue is simply because you think it isn't right? Yes. Is it so terrible that I still have a feeling heart? On this job, it could be. For what? For what good reason would I have to forget what's right and wrong in life? To lose track of such a basic sense would... It would be despicable. I'm not going to relinquish my soul for a job anytime soon, sir. I see. He says it with a hint of... Finality, which I take. I'm sorry, Winter. I can't with sound mind, mind allow you to stop me. God damn it. No, no, listen. While I respect your ardor, I find your position to be ult ultimately unfounded. Fuck. Do you think it's possible for me to actually convince him? And I just messed up? No, no. If not that, you don't seem to be capable enough to handle any sort of resolution under these constraints. Sir. Whether you are for or against me, my plan will carry on with what little time we have left. Why? Why are you doing this? You're too naive if you have to, if you have to ask me that. You idiot! 
You jerk ass, I hate you. I hate you, you're a beast, you're a wretched and abhorrent thing. Are you done? Can I just let it end like this? Wait. There's still something I can do. I can literally force him with the one command he's allowed me. Wait a minute, is this the promise he made? Is she, is she talking about the promise that he made? Should I even do that? I followed his rules and lost the argument. Um... F fuck yeah, force Cyrus to listen. No, I'm doing it. I'm going to make him change his plans. Listen, Cyrus. What? I command you to not kill the president and to try something else instead. What? <laughs> you made me a promise. What? What? Did you forget already? You forced me to drink that beer so I can force you to do this. Really? I don't think that compares. What does it matter if it compares? We have a deal. Winter, we don't have time for this. You're right, we don't. So stop stalling and just listen to me. Cyrus falls into a quiet state of serious thought, as if he has any ability to worm out of this. You simply cannot break a promise. After a good amount of seconds, he finally yields. Understood. All right, I'm getting somewhere. We'll find some other way to do this. You bet that we will. I won't have it any other way. Got that? Yeah, I got it. Are you ready then? We wasted quite a bit of time with that debate. I am. All right. Consider the mediation underway. I nod with strength and certain gravitas. I am not overjoyed by any means at my success. However, I feel a kind of relief in knowing no one will be murdered here. If anything, I am most certainly confident. I managed to get Cyrus, as stubborn as an ox, to listen to me. If I can do that, what do I have to worry about? So, where is the president? Good question. We'll need to find out. We don't have the location of the presidential offices logged, so perhaps we'll head to, the, to a library. At the least, it should offer easy internet access. I giggle at this irony, but Cyrus is thoroughly unamused. <laughs> Yay, we're finally going to a library. So shove the shove the books up your ass, Cyrus, you big dick. Yeah. Do we know where there's a library? In a minute. He looks away from me, and I follow his cue. As it turns out, many people have started filling the streets. Pale-faced and shaken. I should say, the few people who I've seen during my time here have all had familiar looks of wariness on their face. But they've always nonetheless greeted me with a smile. These people do not have the strength to even do so much. I imagine that the speech m must be over now, and what was said quite disturbing. Cyrus breaks away and strolls over to an older person, his expression stern. After a half minute of serious looking chatter, he returns, walking straight past me upon reaching me. Come on, let's go. We haven't been here very long, but I've already relaxed. Cyrus hasn't, though. He's hunched over a keyboard and monitor. In a situation less strict with time, I think I'd like to try reading some of these books. Their stories must be very odd. Fiction is written from reality, right? Then by that notion, I may only assume that here they have books about economy and wartime shenanigans. With an unpleasant thought to ponder, I have to admit that I'm curious. Alright. Alright? Hmm. I got the coordinates for his office. Found the presidential building's floor plan pretty easily. Looks like he really is a figurehead. Practically a tourist attraction. 
Or he would be. I should mention that I actually found that information on a site for tourism. In a less desperate situation, that would have made me laugh. Well, no matter. This is it. Are you prepared? The location data has been sent to your ICD. We'll be off when you're ready. I told you I was before. You're still? Of course. My blood is burning fast and everything. What a ridiculous question. After that gauntlet earlier, what isn't there that I can weather? All right, but if you get worried at all about the dangers, remember that I'm here. I'll make sure you're safe. In a show of what I think is supposed to be reassurance, Cyrus displays a weapon for me from his inventory. A gun, I think. Wow, she doesn't even know what a gun is. Wow. So yeah, wherever she comes from, it sounds like some sort of utopia. Some beautiful place where no one is ever murdered. Ever. And everything's perfect and apparently money is not even an issue. After all, she didn't even know what she didn't even know what poverty was. She doesn't know about poverty. She doesn't know about guns. And now that I think about it, just a random thought. I mean, just realize it's, it's how incredible it is not to know about poverty and not to know about guns. And then I just realized, isn't it sad that we know about poverty and we know about guns? Isn't it sad that that's an issue? That's an incredibly sad thought now that I think about it. I mean, it's basically inevitable, but it's sad nonetheless. <sighs> anyway, okay, back to the game. I do not take it very well. Wait, is, is he handing the gun to her or just saying that he has the gun to use to protect her? An understatement, if I've ever thought one. I almost have a breakdown at the sight of it. Image and reality are very much separate things. And I was beginning to think these guns didn't exist. I was hoping they didn't exist. In its present, I feel myself shrinking. And I can only hope I will pump back up in the next minute or two. I can't be cowering at the climax, can I? I shake my head, quickly. We'll shift in five. Awesome. That's awesome. I start breathing in through my nose and out through my mouth, slowly, trying to quell my heartbeat. Within five, it is mostly successful. Surprising, with today's records, one would imagine I'd be having a fit right around now. Oh, and one more thing. Hmm? Don't say a word. Uh, what? How can I convince the president of anything if I don't say a word? Um, alright. I sort of wanted to speak, too, although I guess this... that is asking for a bit too much. Putting me in charge of the situation would be a bad idea. I can understand the fact. I'm not that stubborn and foolish. It appears that Cyrus thinks otherwise, however, as upon our arrival here, he immediately puts a finger across my lips. I frown behind it, but am mostly alright with it. He starts glancing about the room, and I bounce my gaze around as well. There's a desk, a crest, flags, a man at the window, a video camera, presumably to make addresses with, and other things. Is that a radio I hear? Hmm. Well, the man is the President Barnaby, I assume. In my peripheral vision, I see Cyrus raising his weapon. Uh, excuse me, Cyrus! Wait, wait, wait. There's no call for that. The man's alone, Cyrus. Stop it, what are you doing? Don't shoot him, you idiot. Oh my goodness, he's still raising it. I don't want to see a man get shot. It sounds nauseating, frightening, horrible. My lips tremble, 
and he puts his entire palm over my mouth. I catch myself in confliction, wanting to cry out and stop him, but not wanting to give our presence away. I take to grabbing at the side of his hand and gripping his skin with my nails, trying to pry him off. It's unsuccessful, of course. I can hardly budge his hand. Getting desperate, I try to bite him and only end up awkwardly licking his fingers. <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry, but in this strange situ- this really tense situation, the idea of her trying to bite his fingers and somehow ending up awkwardly licking his fingers was strangely humorous. <laughs> that, that, that's a very strange mental image. Very, very strange. Anyway, with the image of her licking his fingers out of mind, let's continue. At this, he trembles. His cheeks change shade, and he briefly gla glares at me. He squeezes my face shut. He aims at the president, and finally, with willful strength, I manage to wrench his hand from my face and shout. Don't shoot him! Don't move! Having both spoken at once, it ultimately, it ultimately sounds like, don't move him. Noticing what I've done, Cyrus harshly addresses me under his breath. What did I just say, Winter? I push his arm away from me and glare at him with a glare that says, I thought you were going to shoot him. Now what's all this? The president has turned and is now looking at us. I screwed up. Hey, no, wait. Cyrus might really have been about to shoot him. Also, what was he doing holding me like that? What sort of plan was he making? I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and assume you didn't hear me right just now. I said not to move. Well then, I do apologize for my misunderstanding. Right, well, now you know. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Uh... Would, would you like a cup of tea? Uh, okay. Going to say anything more anytime soon? I can't believe we're seriously having an awkward silence here of all places. I mean, really. It takes what feels like minutes before Barnaby decides to break the mood. You're here to kill me, I suppose. No, I've actually come to talk. To talk? His eyes drift from Cyrus to me, and I have no idea what else to do but quake under his gaze. He is foreboding in his oldness. So much for confidence. I don't believe guns can speak. Cute. Just consider the weapon some insurance. It's no real concern, anyway. He looks away from me and back to Cyrus. An action that relaxes my shoulders. Well, I've got to say, I was expecting someone to come for me with a gun. But the girl is a surprise. I'm probably not in any position to be asking questions, but I just have to know what you meant to accomplish in bringing her here. She has to be here, and that's all you need to know. Well, all right. So, where are the guards? They're looking after things that are actually important. What is this devilish old man saying? Is he trying to pull a fast one? Where the longer we fart around with irrelevant questions, the sooner the doors will blast open and both of us be will be killed? Wait a minute. I wonder if he... Does he want to be killed? Did he send his guards away? Assuming that he would be assassinated and he wanted to be because he wants to be a martyr? Did he do this to get Gabria? To rise up and come after him? And hopefully be killed and unite his people against them? Maybe that's his plan. Or does he have an even more sinister plan than that? I voice my concerns in action, tugging Cyrus's jacket and giving him a look. 
Look and tug as I might, though, he refuses to consider me. Whatever. My movements broke his concentration. Now he's taking a minute to recollect his thoughts. I take the opportunity to speak in his stead. All right, wait a second. Cyrus groans and shakes his head, clenching his fist and teeth. Winter. I mostly ignore him. What should it matter whether you're alone or guarded or whatever? Couldn't you be lying and they're in fact waiting behind the door for us? There's no one waiting. Well, even if that were true, then wouldn't it suggest, in your expectation and aloneness, that you're seeking a, well, certain kind of situation? What situation is that? Like, you know, a murder. That's enough, Winter. Okay, okay, fine. There's not going to be any murder here. We both look at Barnaby, who looks dull. Even if that seems to be what someone here wants. Look, I don't know what you're sug... Quiet, alright. The implications here are really rubbing me the wrong way. Planned martyrdom? I don't even want to think about that shit. Well, you're going to make him a martyr anyway. What's it matter whether or not he expected as much? Now listen. That's all I'm asking. Don't argue. Don't make any sarcastic comments. In fact, don't talk unless I give you the go-ahead. If you do, I might have to shoot your legs or something, and I very much doubt you'd like that. Are we clear? Barnaby nods. Hey, that's wonderful. Okay, I want... And this is the only thing. I want your word that you won't launch that nuke. The president regards my mentor with confusion and a touch of disbelief. You may respond. That's just not how it works. I can't give you my word when my country will only suffer in turn. The lives of Gabrians over Brighton's is not something I can accept. Are you dense? I don't just want your word for the Gabrians. I want it for us Brightons. You two are Brightons? Yes. Barnaby descends into peals of laughter. I, on the other hand, am just bewildered by Cyrus's ability to so quickly lie. You expect me to believe that one of my citizens would threaten me over the lives of our oppressors? Yes. I'm sorry, that's just too ridiculous. Are, are you fucking retarded? Do you think Gabria would even think of wasting resources to kill you? You think they even care? Even if you do fire on them, they'll just take it as a chance to dominate us completely again. They'll ravage us. Don't you get it? You're asking for a war. You're about to take on one of the world's military giants with a bomb and a ragged army. This decision did not come easily. I don't want to do this. Then find some other way. There is no other way. You, as anyone else, should understand that. I have tried every other way. I, we, have bent, bent and knelt, nose to the floor, for Gabria for over a century. And do you see where it's gotten us? It hurts me to see my people celebrating the increase of minimum wage when I know damn well that Gabria is laughing at us for the joke that it is. This is the one advantage over Gabria we've ever had. A weapon incomparable to anything in their arsenal, in anybody's arsenal. I am not about to waste that. The options are exhausted. I gave them an ultimatum and I swear to you, we're ready for... We alone can't take on the forces of Gabria, even with the funding they gave us. We are not alone. Looking flustered, Barnaby palms his face. The adults fall silent. Cyrus glances at me in quick bursts, his expression growing increasingly concerned. If what we both heard is right, Barnaby is suggesting that Brighton has friends. Ooh! Maybe they have a deal with Fedria? Their bordering militaristic country? 
Yep, you allied with Fedria. Barnaby pants. Clearly unused to breaking face. It's only temporary. You can't believe that. We had no other choice. We couldn't fund the research on our own. That doesn't matter. Don't you realize? We can trust them. They understand us. Fedra will stomp us into the dust once this is over. We'll have to deal with that as it comes. Once more, they fall silent. This... well, this just changes everything. How could he have gone and done that? To what leagues of desperation has this nation fallen? Barnaby, sweating, finally speaks up again. I'm sorry. Crap almighty, what are we going to do now? With this, Gabria really isn't a threat at all. Those powerful weapons and that vicious nation's backing? Gabria is screwed. A hopelessness settles into me as I realize how out of control the situation has become with one revelation. It looks now that no matter what, there will be killings. Then you asked for a military to keep Gabria out of suspicion. Yes. Killed two birds with one stone that way, huh? Wait a minute, I don't get it. Hold on. You asked for a military to keep Gabria out of suspicion. Out of suspicion? Out of suspicion of what? I, I don't understand what that sentence means. Does, does that mean to keep Gabria from being suspicious? Or what? What is that? I don't know what that means. Hmm. Kill two birds with one stone that way, huh? Yes. Cyrus shakes his head as though the ridiculousness of the situation is simply too much to take. He drops his gun arm, signifying his relinquishment. President Barnaby. He looks at me like he forgot I was in the room. I... I probably don't need to tell you how much you've ruined your... ruined us. You're going to initiate an absolute slaughter this way, and at the end of the day, Fedria will just slaughter us, too. I understand your desperation, but I... I think you don't give Gabria enough... credit. Both pairs of eyes are now on me, and I feel very pressured to speak convincingly. It really is now or never. Wait a minute. She, she's about to convince him that he doesn't give Gabria enough credit? Uh, Winter, where are you going with this? I have good luck. Gabria is their oppressors. Telling him that he doesn't give them enough credit. Uh, good luck. Oh, hey, I just realized there's like another Slender Man or maybe a Slender Woman in the background. Another creepy faceless thing in the background. Weird. It, it's certainly hard living the way we do. My dad works almost constantly. And we really do always have to worry about things like starving and all that. You've really got to remember, though, that you're about to bite the hand that feeds us. They gave us an opening, and as much as you think it's a joke... We celebrate it for a reason. I, I'm sure and I'm positive that you've, if you were to just keep fighting for us, then maybe we could change more things. So you're his daughter. I nod hesitantly. Barnaby shakes his head in a slower manner, reflective of Cyrus's earlier movement. This is just... The strangest thing. Well, do you have anything to suggest, a girl? Some option I might have missed? Well, no, I don't. I was sort of just hoping to appeal to his heart. I don't have anything to offer that he hasn't already considered, I bet. Also, what with the mistake of his union with that nation on the border, I'm pretty sure there is nothing I can suggest to save this place. Still, he seems to want me to answer, 
and Cyrus isn't stepping in. Is there anything I can... Anything I think he missed? Obviously not talking to Gabria. Gabria. Gabria hasn't responded. We were right, then. Gabria will use Brighton's actions to justify violent reaction. Mercy. What do their people think? Setting aside that they're likely under underestimating this country, let us imagine that they knew full well that Brighton posed an actual threat. Would they be willing to go to war, to perhaps die, just to subjugate Brighton once again? I mean, didn't Cyrus say that even Brighton's people don't want this? Why should those of Gabria? They aren't even very militaristic. They must believe that Brighton isn't nearly as dangerous as it actually is. These nuclear weapons have never existed before, right? Then what Brighton needs to do is make Gabria take them seriously to inform the public of their abilities. You could always launch it. He raises an eyebrow. I meant somewhere else. Oh, a show of power. Say, look at this. This is what we can do, and we have more where this came from. Hmm. That might actually work. No one's seen a nuclear bomb go off before. They will be terrified. Where do you suggest? Uh, somewhere where it wouldn't kill anyone? You want me to fire a warning shot? Uh, yes. Gabriel is probably just waiting for us to attack, so that they can retaliate and put us on an even tighter leash. However, if they and their people had a demonstration of the destructive power of the bomb, then I think... Barnaby heaves a mighty sigh. Sorry to say, little girl, but that option has already been considered and rejected. Why? We can't afford it. Let us just say that our supply of warheads is limited, and that production costs are rather high. What's a warhead? Oh god, Winter. <laughs> she, she's not exactly selling her argument very well when she has to ask, what's a warhead? Another name for the bomb. Oh, of course. Even with the funding Fedria has given us, we could only make so many. Aside from the monetary cost, the materials are particularly difficult, difficult to procure and time-consuming to process. We simply cannot afford to be wasteful. We will need every weapon available for whatever threats could be coming. Gabrian or, I hate to say it, Fedrian. Well, it wouldn't be wasteful. It would be to scare them and avoid this whole thing. I know what you would intend them for, but I'm afraid that object objectively it would be a waste. If I may interject. We are both surprised that Cyrus still has a voice. The bomb is untested. Practically. If we had done a full-scale test, our cover would have been blown. Then there's really never been anything like this before. Pardon me, but I don't follow sciences. That's right. While Gabria and other nations have tampered with nuclear fusion, it has never been applied to weaponry this successfully. According to our scientists, our largest bomb should be enough to wipe out their capital. <sighs> Hearing that still makes my head spin. All of Gabrere? Isn't it just a bomb? Not a conventional bomb. Well, it's no wonder Gabria isn't listening. No one understands what this thing is. Were you just planning on surprising them? How disgusting. The lives we take in our attack would be nothing compared to the losses we have suffered under their rule. No statistics have ever been released, but upwards of 100,000 die every year from poverty in our country. Jesus, 100,000 every year? Oh my god. What? To put that in perspective, our nation's population is numbered at 34 million, and an estimated 5 million 
have been lost in just the last 60 years. Jesus. Yeah, that's about my reaction, Winter. 47% of this nation lives in poverty, and the rest still suffer under pitiful wages. Sacrificing the city of Gabrer in an instant? A mere three million? I wouldn't sleep any worse for it. That's stupid. Winter, not now. It is, though. What terrifying numbers. And he wants to raise them? What does that even prove? She's right, though. That is very stupid. Mr. President, stop thinking so little of other of other lives. <laughs> Funny you should say that. Gabria has hurt us. But what will returning the favor accomplish? You're only going to breed more hate. We have a military. We have Fedria. And as if the, as if those weren't enough, it seems we have more than one city leveling bomb. Reconsider already. Just launch it into the ocean. Let them realize what we're capable of. Anyone would fear the weapons we harbor, and you have no reason not to brandish them. You could spare those three million lives. You don't have to sacrifice them to make a point. Even if I did agree, I don't know if I have that kind of power. Oh, please, don't act weak now. Talk with your advisors, make a new call, and make the Gabrians piss themselves in terror. In the aftermath, I get the feeling they'd be more than willing to talk. Hell, maybe they'll even give us more than we ever asked for. Just give them that chance. I... I... will do what I can, then. Really? The President reaches up and compresses part of his collar between two fingers. Call off the launch for now. We're having a conference. Immediately. This is an executive command from President Jonathan Barnaby. Call X-374. It's done. We'll reconsider the issue. However, however, we'll need to make a decision quickly. And if it changes from the one we'd already made, I'm frankly not sure how the Fedrians will take it. But we can't allow them to control us. I'm not shitting a master just to take a new one. We should not charge headlong into war just for slights against us. We should retain our identity as Brightons. Just as you two. Then we're honorary Brightons now? What a badge of shame. Speaking of you two, I'd appreciate it if you used whatever way you got in to get out of here. Whatever organization you're a part of, well, I just assume that you are, but... I think it would be best if you remain anonymous. I would agree. Cyrus turns and walks a few steps before stopping to scrutinize the rug. He breaks his gaze from it and calls back to Barnaby. Hey. Yes? Thanks for actually listening to us. Thanks for not shooting me. Watch it. I didn't promise I wouldn't bust any kneecaps. This worries me for a second, but as it turns out, his weapon is already put away. It actually worked, at least. I mean, we made him reconsider, that's not to say the result is necessarily going to be good, but for now we have averted nuclear war. With Barnaby's husky laughter in our ears, we shift from the room. Back to where we started.